clearly have to begin tonight with Ukraine. It is the story that you've either been persistently avoiding because it's stressing you out, or you've been following obsessively for the exact same reason. As we are all now painfully aware, Vladimir Putin, Russian president and World War III edgelord, began an assault on the second largest country in Europe this week, shelling several cities and sending troops across the border. It has been horrifying to watch, and CNN, during its coverage of air raid sirens in Kyiv, somehow found a way to make it even worse with this terrible transition to break. It's not great, is it? And it's not just that it cut to a commercial for a restaurant chain whose food can only be described as sometimes warm. <laughs> it's just so aggressively American. From the country song that thinks listing food counts as lyrics, all the way to this human boot barn shaking his non-existent ass. Applebee's actually put out a statement afterward, apologising, saying, we are deeply concerned about the situation in Ukraine. The ad never should have aired, and we are disappointed in the actions of the network. And that is some deft international diplomacy from the home of both the grilled oriental chicken salad and the tipsy leprechaun. And you know, when Applebee's is apologising for interrupting the coverage of Russia invading Ukraine, this week got seriously out of hand. Condemnation of Putin's invasion has been widespread, from the UN Secretary General, the Pope, and even George W. Bush, who stated, I joined the international community in condemning Putin's unprovoked and unjustified invasion of Ukraine. And hold on, George, not from you. You are not the guy for this one, because that statement only would have made sense if it ended with, oh, shit, now I hear it. Sorry, I'll shut the fuck up now. Now, for the time being... Instead of putting troops on the ground, countries around the world have announced a flurry of sanctions on Russia. But Putin seems to have taken that into account, because in the eight years since invading Crimea, he's taken steps to blunt their impact by restructuring Russia's economy for the specific purpose of withstanding Western financial pressure. It's just one of the many ways in which, as shocking as the speed of this week's events may have been, they were actually depressingly predictable. Putin has been laying the groundwork for this for years. State media there has long pushed fake stories of Ukrainian brutality, including at one point alleging that the Ukrainian military had tortured and then crucified a three-year-old, a claim for which no one could turn up any evidence and which is widely accepted to have been a fabrication. And that is just one incident of many. Just this year, Russian state media has been airing false flag videos to try and build a pretext for an invasion, some of which were pretty sloppily put together. On February 18th, pro-Russian separatists released a video purporting to show a gun battle in a forest. ABC News confirms the video file appears to have been created on February 8th. That's 10 days earlier than the alleged attack. Further analysis by ABC News and Bellingcat indicate that some of the explosions in the video were actually taken from a 2010 Finnish Defence Forces training video. Oh, come on, Russia. You're stealing explosions from Finnish Defence Forces? If you're going to go to the trouble of faking footage, at least put some effort in, steal the whole thing, and then throw in some T-Rexes from Jurassic Park as well. Why not at least have some fun with your lies as you're dragging a continent into a pointless war? The point here is, this has been in the works for a very long time. You may have heard Putin frame the invasion as the denazification of Ukraine and thought, hold on, that's a very weird thing to say. But he's been making that bullshit case for years now, despite the fact Ukraine's current president is both Jewish and had family members die in the Holocaust. And I don't want to play who's the biggest Nazi here. That, after all, is what Twitter is for. But between <laughs> Zelensky and Putin, if you're looking for who is more like Hitler... I'm just going to go with the ethno-nationalist despot invading sovereign European territory, and who is also a terrible fucking painter. <laughs> Putin has doggedly pursued this and has not seemed to want to hear any arguments against it. 